One eternity later. Pumpkin pie. It's still Christmas in this house. This hat is lame. We need to like supersize the Christmasness here, okay? It needs like more fluff. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's just like it's just it's just there. It needs more. It needs more. <laughs> I feel like I need to cut these. So you've been browsing around Disney Plus and you came across this Christmas story of the latest kid on the holiday block trying to make its way into the new tradition along with movies like Home Alone and Miracle on 32nd Street or It's a Wonderful Life. And I think it's safe to say that Noel won't be taking the place of any of these legends anytime soon. Nonetheless, there are actually many secrets and easter eggs scattered around the movie and Santa has a cheat sheet. And so today, I am going to be your cheat sheet. Here's everything you missed in Disney's movie, Noel. So in case you're wondering where I got this hat, um, I robbed Santa Claus last night. He came through my chimney and, well, I live in a gun state, so I was like, give me all the presents. And he's like, I can't do that. I got to give it to the kids. And I'm like, okay, well, give me the hat. <laughs> so if you sell Santa not wearing a hat, <laughs> he came to my house first. <laughs> Since this is one of the big feature films to help roll out the red carpet for Disney Plus, there should be no surprise that there's a lot of hidden Mickeys. Yeah, I said it, hidden Mickey. Comment how many times you think Mickey appeared in the movie, and no cheating, or you will be on Santa's naughty list for next Christmas. <sighs> the first time we see little girl Noelle Kringle, she is wearing a Disney pajama set. And on that pajama set, it has Mickey Christmas briefs with antlers. Then, of course, we have Mickey and Minnie all over the place. Looking down on the floor, they have a rug with Mickey in the middle of the snowflakes. Then look at the chimney that Santa just came down in. The decoration on the back of it has Mickey smack dab in the middle of it. And the homeless shelter, if you look on the bulletin board, you will see someone drew a Mickey. Another time we see Mickey is in the Hall of Santas. The wallpaper literally has a hidden Mickey in it. <laughs> Another moment is when Noel is at the Southwest Sundry. Another moment is when Noel is. Okay, I gotta say this. It's really weird saying Noel because my dad's name is Noel, and it's like I'm saying another moment with dad. Another moment with Noel is at the Southwest Sundries. We see several Duffy dolls, and a lady is buying a Shelly May doll. In case you didn't know, these are new Disney characters, and if you look at their feet, you will see a hidden Mickey. But why did they have to build bears? Because Build-A-Bear was moving in on their turf and Disney has to dominate every single toy category. <laughs> the Daily Carol has a few fun news articles. How to make the perfect snow angel. El Scientist makes the first ice cream cow. And the Cookie Cottage fire heroes are honored. And while we're here, this elf right here is an Easter egg. She is Carol from the Daily Carol. Elf Carol, Daily Carol. And she's played by Gracie Lawrence. What's the secret here? Because some of the music was by Clyde Lawrence. Clyde Lawrence and Gracie Lawrence are brothers and sisters. And they're in a band, and Gracie sings in some of the songs. <laughs> Not enough of a connection for you? Well, how about this? The movie was written and directed by Mark Lawrence. That's right, their dad. There was also some Christmas magic at the homeless shelter. When Noelle introduces herself, she says and signs her name to the little girl. But if you look closely, the girl never actually signed her name and Noelle already knew her name. Nice to meet you too, Michelle. So the mom is shocked that the lady knows how to say sign language, but she's not even shocked that the lady knows her daughter's name even though her daughter never said her name. <laughs> Then if you watch in the end, you will see a postcard from Hawaii with Helen saying thanks for everything, obviously because she just went to Hawaii. But if you look closely, we also see that Michelle's mom got a job as the art teacher at her school. Meanwhile, back in the North Pole, the cafe is a shout out to the Polar Express. It's literally called the Polar Express. Does make sense though, since they serve hot chocolate. <laughs> if you look at the menu, you're also gonna see a little pun there. They have coal oven pizza. Perhaps this is where Santa gets all the coals for the bad ginger gentlets who don't like this video. Like it so we can continue. You think fluff is cheap? But I gotta stop and say the snowman salt and pepper shaker holders are pretty brilliant. <laughs> Not an Easter egg. Back to the naughty and nice list, it looks like Elizabeth Shaw is on Santa's nice list. Probably because she was in the movie God's Not Dead. Okay, okay, but let's look at the main actor in the movie here, Noel, Or should I say, Anna Kendrick. The first time we see her in the movie is an Easter egg. 
to what, you might ask? Making a pop-up Christmas card. Sound familiar? In case you didn't know this or you forgot, Anna also played as Princess Poppy in the popular movie Trolls. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. In that movie, the character that she played also was known for making pop-up greeting cards. Great freedom from the Bergens! But when it comes to being Santa Claus, she doesn't make a very good Santa. And no, I'm not saying because she's a girl and Santa's a boy. I'm not playing the are you woke or not game. Honestly, when it comes to Santa movies, I don't really care who Santa is because Santa isn't even Almost lost my cool there. Back in the office, I didn't care if Phyllis was Santa Claus. And I don't care if Noelle is Santa Claus. If she wants to be Santa, great. And that's not why I think she made a bad Santa. If you watch when she's trying to teach her brother how to be a Santa Claus since he is so bad at it, she's literally reading the book on how to be Santa Claus and she still gets it wrong. The book says Santa must tap the chimney with the magic candy cane. Nowhere does it say that he has to tap it three times. The chimney will expand when you tap three times with the magical candy cane. Yet she insists that the chimney doesn't open unless you tap it three times. And she consistently says that through the whole movie. But it doesn't say it in the handbook. <laughs> then she says that you have to sing the first line of Wish You a Merry Christmas. And sing the first line of We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Again, nowhere in the book does it say you only have to sing the first line. So she's just making up rules as she goes. Assuming that you stay in key. Hold your reindeer. But it does say that if you sing off key, the chimney will not open up. Yet somehow, just mumbling the song at the end, We wish you a Merry Christmas. And the chimney opens. You're gonna tell me that was on key? <laughs> and it wasn't even the whole song. How am I supposed to know? He also had another option in case he couldn't sing on key. Like me. I can't sing on key, okay? Chillax. Another option he had, though, was he could recite the entire Christmas covenant, including all of its amendments. Now, to be fair, this book is supposed to be the holy grail of how to be Santa Claus. You know, Santa for dummies. But if you look at this part in the book, navigating in adverse weather then navigating in adverse weather. It literally copy and pasted its own page onto the next page. So even the book has its own mistakes. The Santa suit also fits you when you fit it. Maybe I can't be Santa because all this fluff isn't fitting me. And if you remember the movie The Santa Claus, you physically transform into Santa as well. Yes, I do also agree that Gabriel Pringle seemed to be a little bit of an odd fit for a Santa Claus. But once he was into his position, unlike Noel's brother, he at least took on responsibilities head on and tried to problem solve and all the other fun stuff. And it seems that Santa magically agreed because he was slowly turning into Santa Claus. If you remember, this is what he looked like when he first got the job as Santa Claus. Then this is what he looked like after he lost the job. So maybe his fa -la, la system isn't that far la la away from a really good idea. And if you ask me, I'd say that this town hall from the North Pole also shares a lot of striking resemblance to the town hall at Disney. When Noelle calls her little reindeer, she sings out of her window just like Enchanted. If you remember from long enough ago, we found Pinocchio entangled hanging on the wall. I'm a real boy! Well, if you look on this wall here by the stairs, you will see a Pinocchio. Marvel got a shout out as well. On the cover of the men's magazine, we see Chris Hemsworth, and that's the hammer swinger Thor. And over here on the cover, it says swap fat for ripped. This is probably a reference to Avengers Endgame. Originally, Noel was scheduled to go to theaters first, but then Disney's decided to pull back on the reins and plug it into their own theaters and release it straight to Disney+. Plus. One reason, though, is probably to sweeten the pot of the Disney+, Plus so more people sign up for their program. I think another reason though was because quite frankly it wasn't a movie theater quality movie and more like a uh, cheesy Hallmark movie. Boo! Pick a plot line! The acting was good, I'm not knocking the actors. Well, most of them. Some actors seem to have a tad bit of a cringe factor in them. <laughs> cringe! Uh, I disagree. <laughs> I never cringe. The main reason I think the video kind of tanked was because the CGI seemed weak. But I don't get why they had to make fake logs for Elf Polly to drop. Seems like it would have been a lot cheaper just to give her some real logs to drop. And if it's too heavy for them, they could have made styrofoam fake logs. By the way, the logs move. 
on their own. When the girl goes to sit on Santa's lap, we see that dad is dumb and doesn't know how to take pictures and mom is smart because she took them with the phone sideways. But seconds later, both of them took stupid pills. Why? Because they went vertical again. But what's crazy magical though isn't the fact that she went instantly from vertical to horizontal, but the fact that if you look at her camera when she's taking the picture of Santa Claus, we can see Santa and maybe the little girl on the phone, but that's right, Noelle isn't in the picture. Survey time! Do you think this is because it's a mistake and they forgot to put her in the picture? Or do you think this is because she was turning into Santa Claus and Santa's magical and you can't see him? <laughs> is that because she's the real Santa? They also have a sign that they try to draw your attention into that's saying Santa will return soon because it's nearing the end of the movie and Santa needs to come back or we're gonna miss Christmas. Usually this would be foreshadowing the ending, but in this particular case, it's actually being used as a subtle misdirection to the ending. One thing I liked about this movie is the fact that it was filmed in my home city, Phoenix, Arizona. And I have to point out that there's a few problems with the Desert Ridge Marketplace. Yes, this is a very real place, and in fact, this is where Noelle and Elf Polly came in for a crash landing right through the palm trees. And over there to the left, we see Target between the trees, but a lot of this movie doesn't fit real life. In fact, it proves that Disney had some backup plans to make sure that they recoup their expenses on making this movie. How, you might ask? The movie was caked in ads. Remember Petco? People are rushing into my Petco. How many times did they have to mention Petco in the movie? Petco hat, Petco shirt, Petco apron. Obviously, it's a Petco ad. But I know some of you out there are doubting, so let me give you a little bit more information here. The nearest Petco to this particular mall is 14 miles away. Petco, 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 Petco. Tommy Hilfiger doesn't even exist there. Taco Bell? Nope, not at this mall. And we also don't have a Best Buy there either. That's right, these companies all just lined up and threw their money at Disney to get their name in the movie. Also, a fun fact is I used to work security at a mall, and an easy red flag to spot a shoplifter is that they would be carrying shopping bags from a store that wasn't even in the mall. Because shoplifters are kind of stupid people. This mall also doesn't have a Saks Fifth Avenue, so I don't know what in the world Nicole is looking at. What we do have here though is Hot Topic, and also this store here is Claire's, and you can tell by the sign. We also don't have a Nike store here though either. So what happened? A lot of these scenes we see most likely took place on a set with a green screen or giant prints of the actual locations. And yes, some of the B-roll footage was actually filmed on location. Like this part is actually part of the parking lot at the mall. A bigger advertisement than Petco, believe it or not, was Apple. Seems like everyone wanted an iPad for Christmas. Raise your hand if you got an iPad for Christmas. I didn't. If you watched in the North Pole, all of Santa's helpers use exclusively Apple products. No PCs there including a million iPads. iPad, 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 iPad. Maricopa Medical Center is also another real location. However, if you look at the top floor, there are four windows and they are all spaced out evenly. Even in the movie, they show that. But when she climbs out the window, they are all together again. Also, the place inside a hospital that keeps crazy people, you can't just unlatch the window and climb out, especially on the top floor. It's not like there's a balcony out there. It's an elevator ride to the bottom. The Desert Botanical Garden is also a real place and you can visit there anytime you want. I suppose if you aren't from Arizona, it looks amazing. But for me, it just looks like somebody's backyard. Artsy fartsy. Thanks for going on another adventure with me. Thumbs up the video and help me survive. Let me know what movie you want to talk about next. And if you don't subscribe to this channel, this is gonna happen to you. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You get nothing. You lose! Shout out to my members who support the channel. If you want your name right here, you can go ahead and click that join button below and that helps support the channel and keep the light bulbs on because I apparently have to have like a billion light bulbs to see you and I just looked inside one of them. Hey, share a smile. They're contagious. Can you imagine a day without smiling? <laughs> that would be outrageous. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with Crazy Nate. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if he left you feeling great. Have fun and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe.